Hello, everybody. Um, what, I'm, what we've been working on since uh, the beginning of October was uh, subject matter. Subject matter is what your picture is about. So if you paint or draw a picture about outside, we call that a landscape. If you do uh, painting or pictures of a person, portraits. And if you uh, paint or draw pictures uh, or photograph uh, pictures of objects where artists uh, arrange objects on the table, we call that still lives. So for the whole month of October, we were trying to get um, <clears throat> an example of each one of these. So I wanted you to create a draw, uh, draw a fall landscape. Uh, we used uh, creature development and drew portraits of wild things, uh, dealing with portraits. And today, what I'm going to do is teach you guys how to draw a still life, a sort of a fall still life. So if we look at this uh, example of this still life, we see objects on a table and they sort of help you to remember uh, or remind us that it is the fall season. So we have a basket of gourds and pumpkins. We've got some pumpkins here in the front. We have uh, a, a, a glass jar with some water and some flowers. Uh, it's sitting on a wooden table. we got a wooden background. This uh, is a great example of a, a great fall landscape. But we can also change the objects and make it even a more mysterious land, uh, still life. Um, so if we look at the objects on this table, we see a wand, we see a, a crystal globe, we see a necktie, we see a shirt, we see a book, it says potion making, we see some round glasses, we see um, a folded up uh, map, uh, and it looks like it's got a castle on it. Uh, whose table do you think this is? Yeah, it's actually Harry Potter. So items, uh, you know, if we're going to draw a still life where there's objects on the table, the objects could tell you who the table belongs to. So being a good art detective, you can determine um, you know, what season it is or whose table this might uh, belong to. So here's what I like to do. I'm going to flip my camera around and I'd like to uh, talk you through and, and how to draw some basic objects uh, that we might find on a table, especially this time of year around, around the, the fall season. And then you can add your, uh, the objects that you want to add to the table. So you can add, actually add some, maybe some spooky elements or um, and, and make it a little bit uh, creative. So give me a second, I'm going to flip the camera around and I want you to draw with me. Now I'm going to draw on a sheet of paper. It's going to be a sort of a light brown paper, but you can use any paper you have at home. Uh, I'm going to use a black crayon and then I'm going to color it in with my color crayons. So it's really all you need uh, for this simple uh, project. And if you just want to learn how to draw the uh, simple objects, you can just use a uh, pencil and uh, notebook paper and then you can um, uh, learn the the the, uh, the steps of how to make the objects, and then you can turn around and go back and make a, your own uh, still life drawing. So, uh, give me a second, and let's we'll, we'll draw it with um, uh, we'll draw it together as a uh, as a team. All right, boys, girls. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'd love for you to draw with me as I'm drawing. So if I go too fast, you can always pause the video, or you can fast forward it if I. Uh, get too slow, but uh, I'd love for you to draw with me. So here's my deal. I've got my uh, paper turned horizontal. I've got my black crayon. It's a little short, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an object uh, that I think we, that the screams fall. So if we think of an object that we only see in the fall, like a big pumpkin, but we're going to make our pumpkin so large <clears throat> that it's, it's going to only half fit on our paper, so it only fits halfway. Now, to make it look more like a real pumpkin, instead of just a big capital C backwards, <clears throat> I'm going to draw a little rectangle for the stem. Now, you can always give it a little marks at the top uh, to make it look more like a realistic uh, wooden stem. Now, to, uh, to make the ridges of the pumpkin, I'm going to go, I'm going to start with the stem, I'm going to go all the way down, and I do a curve and I go all the way back up and I make another curve. And then the curves get a little smaller and smaller as I go through. So it has those ridges of a pumpkin. Now the favorite thing I'd like to teach you is uh, how to draw a book. <clears throat> a, lot of thing, a lot of people have books on their tables, 
So let me see if I can teach you how to draw a book. So I'm going to start off with a capital letter C. Now the C is just a little bit over from where the pumpkin is. And then in front of the C, I'm going to make another C. And so if they're, they're sort of uh, together. So what i got to do now is i got to connect this C to this C. So if I draw a horizontal line that connects the two C's together, and I, what I do at the top, I also have to do at the bottom. So I'm going to connect the bottom C. Now there's actually three C's in this drawing, but you may not see them because the third C is hiding behind the pumpkin. So let's go from the top of the C and see if we can find it. So we're going to go from the top of the C and we're going to go over to the pumpkin to see if we can find the other one. Now what we do at the top we also do at the bottom. So I'm going to go from the bottom of the C and I do a diagonal line to where the back to behind the pumpkin. Now even though we can't see the C we're going to see if we can maybe pull it out. So if I take I make a horizontal line and then as soon as I passed past this C, I stop. So how do we connect it? Well, I don't want to keep going horizontal because that, that won't touch it. So what I gotta do is I gotta make a diagonal line from, from this point down to the C in the front. And there's your book. This is the side that we draw the pages. So I'm gonna draw some more horizontal lines. And depending on what kind of still life you want to make, if you want to make it really scary, you can write the word math, and it can be a math book. If you write the word spell, it could be a wizard's book. Now, we've got a pumpkin. That's a good thing to have on a table around fall. A lot of people have books on their table. But let's think about a scientist like Miss Hall. Miss Hall is a scientist, and I bet she has all kinds of test tubes and beakers for when she makes science experiments. So to make a, a, a what we call a, a beaker, a glass beaker, I'm going to make an oval, and I draw this on the right side. My favorite number today is number 11, so I'll make a skinny number 11, 1, 1. And then you get to tell me what kind of shape you want to make the bottom of the bottle. Do you want to make it triangular? Or do you want to make it circle? So if I make it triangular, I'm just going to round off the corners. And it looks like a test beaker that we might put uh, chemicals or a potion or have something with a chemical reaction. So I draw what's inside the bottle. And then I'm going to draw the bottom of the liquid. Notice I don't touch the edges. Because if you want to make this look like it's liquid inside the bottle, well, we're trying to make it look like glass, and so if I leave, if I don't touch the my line, it gives a little outline that makes it look like um, like it's real glass. And then when you go to color it, you know you can use uh, you know your colors on the inside of whatever your potion is, and then you can go back and color your your glass white. Uh, I use a white crayon to make highlights. And if you want it to have a chemical reaction, maybe it's bubbling. Maybe it's bubbling out. And it's got bubbles floating in the air. Now, if your uh, uh, table is really dark, maybe it's really dark in the room, what if we lit a candle? So right beside the test beaker, I'm going to put a candle. So I'm going to make my favorite number, number 11. I'm going to put a rectangle on the bottom. And I'm going to draw an oval. A rectangle and an oval on the bottom of my candle makes it look like it's a candle holder. Now the really old candle holders back in the old days would have these circles on the side. And I'm going to do it twice so that you see it's got a loop. And that's where you'd put your finger in and you can hold the candle. But what happens to the top of the candle when you light, uh, light the flame? It, yeah, you're right. It starts to melt. And so I'm going to make this really wavy line, uh, curvy line, to make it look like the candle is melting. The less perfect you make that, the more realistic the candle looks. I'm going to draw a little line. That's the wick. That's the part that we like. I'm going to draw the letter J. And that's my flame. 
And I can always go back in and color yellow and orange to make my flame even more realistic. Oh, I forgot something. If we're supposed to be drawing a still life, still lives are objects that sit on the table. Well, we got the objects, but we forgot to draw the table. So let's draw the table line back here in the back. I don't like doing the table line first because then we would have the table line showing through the pumpkin. So we draw the objects first, the table line last. So I'm going to come in with a diagonal. And I notice I stop and I pick up so I don't, I don't go through the objects. I go behind the objects. Now we have a table. Now what kind of objects would you want on your table? Now after Halloween, if you go trick-or-treating, you might have lots and lots of candy. My favorite candy is those candy corns. Maybe you, uh, you know somebody that has that wears glasses. I wear glasses. So I might put glasses on top of my book. Or if this is Harry Potter's table, he might put you might put the the wand. If you if you enjoyed drawing creatures with me uh, last week, or with Miss Cahoon, if you're in kindergarten and drawing wild things, what if I put a, a three uh, three fuzzy circles and put little triangles on it? It looks like a paw trying to get my candy. Maybe it's scratched the table. So after you put all of your objects that you want on the table, and you can add a hat, you can add a lot of extra things, you, anything you want to add to your table, go ahead and add it. But once you finish with that, what's behind your table? So I put a creature there, or you might draw your, uh, yourself. If I draw a large rectangle, this could be a window. And then I can draw a landscape in the window. If I draw a, a maybe a picture, maybe it's a portrait in the picture frame. And so, there's my smile. Here's, I could draw maybe a portrait of Mona Lisa. I, I forgot to make my landscape over here, didn't I? I can draw my fall tree. Maybe a cemetery or a graveyard out there. Maybe there's some pumpkins. We might draw the pumpkin patch. Uh, we might draw the spooky house. So you get to make up your your uh, your still life however you want. I do want to show you though what it would look like once you add color. So this is an example of my finished uh, still life where I went in and added all the color. So I hope you just have a good time, uh, draw, you know, think about objects you want on the table. You can use objects you have in your room. You could use toys. Um, you don't have to draw the same objects I did. Uh, I thought it would be fun to draw along with me. But then after you learn how to draw the pumpkin, the book, the, the test beaker, and the candle, then you get to make up the rest of your story. So I hope you enjoyed the project. Uh, now we have uh, landscapes, we've had uh, portraits, and now we have an example of still lives. So until next time, uh, catch you later.